Act Two of Rollo's Wild Oat by Claire Coomer. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Two Scene Rollo's Dressing Room in the Oddity Theater. A dressing table right. A chair in front of it. A poster of the Rolster Producing Company, on wall, right upper. A sheet for covering costumes on wall, left upper. A door upstage center. A wardrobe chest down left center. A chair up right. At rise, Houston enters the room, followed by Lydia, in prologue costume. Where have you looked for him, Houston? Well, miss, there's not much place to look, only behind the curtains and I've shaken them thoroughly. But you don't really think he's running away, Houston? Why, what can he be thinking of? Very likely he's not thinking at all, miss. Just stepping out. Houston, shouldn't you notify Mr. Stein? Well, that's it, miss. It's very early. Of course, Mr. Rollo has plenty of time to get back. Yes, if we only knew which direction he's going in. Houston, I think we should ask someone's advice. Yes, miss. Whose? Well, I think Mr. Lucas is the most sensible one in the company, don't you? He might be, at that. Yes, ask Mr. Lucas to come here. If I just raise my voice, he'll hear me. Mr. Lucas, would you kindly step into Mr. Webster's dressing room for a moment? Lucas, very audibly from the next room... Why, certainly. Is there any hurry? Yes, there is. To Houston. Why, isn't that wonderful? You can hear perfectly. Very wonderful, sometimes, miss. Enter Lucas in costume of Laertes. Lydia, looking at him admiringly. Mercy! Is anything the matter? Nothing. Only you look so terribly handsome. Her manner changing. Yes, yes, there is something the matter. Rollo has disappeared. Disappeared? Why, that's impossible. Glancing at Houston. Yes, sir, it's true. Do you think we ought to send Houston to tell Mr. Stein? Decidedly. Don't bring him back with you, Houston, if you can help it. Just say that Mr. Rollo has gone, and, uh, uh... Looking inquiringly at Lucas. And hasn't come back. Yes, tell him that, Houston. Yes, miss. Exit. What do you suppose we'll do if he doesn't come back at all? Lydia, downright. It's odd, really. Everything I have anything to do with closes just before it opens. Does it? Of course, I can't be very sorry, because I'm so frightened. Are you? Lucas comes down left of Lydia. Yes. Mr. Lucas, you've been so kind to me, helping me about my part and everything, but I don't think I'll ever be really great, do you? Who can tell? Why, I think almost anyone can. I'm not strange enough. Now you, anyone can see that you are a great actor. Do you think so? Oh, yes, you are quite different from anyone I've ever met. You seem to be acting all the time. I suppose you do it even when you are alone. I'm not acting when I'm with you, Lydia. Oh, aren't you? You seem to be. I like it, only it does make you seem very far away. I don't want to seem far away. And I don't want to be far away. And I shall regret it most bitterly if you give up the stage, for then I shall lose you out of my life. Why, Mr. Lucas? Looking up at him. Call me George. Oh, I couldn't takes a sidestep nearer Lucas. Why, of course you could. Call me George. About to put his arm around her. Enter Rollo. His overcoat is on over his Hamlet costume. What's the idea? Lydia, springing away from Lucas. Lucas goes left. That's just what we were asking. Oh, really? It didn't sound like that. Lydia, sitting on chair, where have you been? I've been out looking at the moon. Looking at the moon? Where? 
in its usual place but where were you rollo i was just across the street in a doorway i found over there on the night you're going to play hamlet yes the moon is shining just the same did you notice it lucas i can't say i did i came down in the subway you ought to go out and have a look at it after all nature well she's pretty wonderful i don't care what you say crosses left to lucas i never had any idea but that she was mr webster you don't seem to realize that we were terribly worried about you rollo houston has gone to tell mr stein that you've disappeared rollo glancing accusingly at lucas who told him to do that well you had hadn't you how could we know that you were hiding in a doorway enter stein stein much excited well here he is you want to turn my hair white i suppose you're always making trouble lucas getting up a scare i heard it about you before in every company you ever was in you get up an excitement over nothing don't be absurd mr stein i had nothing to do with it stein to rollo they told me you had left us flat that's a nice thing to say to a manager when he's standing in the lobby on opening night trying to keep a smile on his face where was you rollo i just stepped out to get a little air quite natural i should think i should think so too sits on bench lucas crossing to lydia if i can't be of any more service to you i'll go thank you so much for all you've done i'll go too follows lucas down lucas exits lydia just a moment to her softly if i ever catch you calling him george exit lydia haughtily don't you feel good rollo uh, i feel all right takes off overcoat and puts it on chair upstage sits in chair at dressing table you know i'm as nervous as the dickens some fellows i know been talking to me out there because i'm producing shakespeare they got a respect for me they never had before well that's good better late than never those fellows said they didn't think i had it in me i didn't it is you i have to thank rollo crosses to rollo that's all right stein old man i don't want you to thank me call me Aby. if you don't mind i won't just now later perhaps after the performance rollo promise me you ain't going to lay down on me rollo rising my god no all right all right don't get excited and if you do get nervous just say to yourself abby is counting on me lights go out calling as he exits lights lights houston enters lighting the candles on rollo's dressing table I thought this would happen, sir, when I saw the electrician, so I prepared for it. A knock on the door. Rollo opens door. Goldie stands in the doorway. She wears a kimono, but her hair is still coiled round her head. Mr. Webster, the lights have gone out in my dressing room. Mine are out, too. Come in and wait. Houston, find the electrician. Exit Houston goldie coming in it's terribly early goes left sits on bench yeah, yes it will be forever until the curtain goes up but it will go up sits on bench left of goldie oh yes it will go up and then no matter what happens it will come down something quite outside myself seems to be telling me that it's a tremendous moment a moment so many have gone through i suppose because a tremendous man provided it for us 
when i read his lines i find i am singing them that's because he meant you to he grips you goldie you can't get away from him you could have but it's too late now goldie we are like two children waiting to be born into a wonderful world the world shakespeare made yes i don't feel as though i shall live very long of course you will it's natural that the greatness of what we are about to do should be a little overpowering oh i'm glad to hear you speak that way it is great much too great for us i mean for me and i can't help feeling that mrs park gales ought to be doing it she wouldn't have wanted anything changed or left out she wouldn't mind a puffed and reckless libertine at all she said so goldie don't talk like that they read the lines the way he meant them to i'm sure he never would have wanted me warning lights he was a man goldie uh, of course he would have wanted you and hated mrs park gales do you think so i know it i wish i could say something to comfort you goldie but i can't seem to help thinking of myself this feeling of of awe that i have is almost physical i know take long breaths and if you can keep your knees stiff you'll be all right someone who knew all about it told me that who knew all about what why stage fright that's what we have i always have it it's shakespeare goldie i felt just the same way when i played in sinbad the sailor oh if we only weren't going to do it rises to center rollo going close to her don't feel so badly about it just keep saying over and over to yourself he does want me he does i know he wants me who rollo lights go on why shakespeare there they are i must go good-bye Good luck, Rollo. Exit. Enter Houston with long box, stems protruding from the end. Rollo goes to dressing table. Some flowers for you, sir. Take them out. Don't bring anything in here until I get out. Very good, sir. Would you care to know who they're from? No. I'll just set them outside. Puts box outside. Entering. I haven't come across your wig, sir. I've got it on. You're not going to wear your own hair, sir. Why not? Hamlet wore his own hair, didn't he? But he was always referred to as the melancholy dame, sir. Well, can't you be melancholy with light hair? I had hoped you were going to take off your mustache, sir. What for? I'm sure Hamlet didn't wear a mustache. I'm sure he did. That was exactly like mine. Camperdown knocks. Houston opens door. Camperdown, made up as Polonius, with an insinuating look at Rollo. Well, how are we feeling this evening? I'm feeling all right. How are you feeling, Houston? I'm feeling very well, sir. Camperdown to Rollo. Don't be nervous. After all, it's no more than others have tried to do. And there's always room in the world for one more Hamlet. Thanks. I hope there'll be more room in the world than there is in this dressing room. I remember the occasion of my first appearance very well. I was in the theater by three o'clock in the afternoon. Some friends brought me food at about six. A dish of very nice grilled bones and an egg on the side. Do you think I could eat? I fairly drove them from the room. How did you do it? I understand, Mr. Webster. Laughing indulgently. I won't wait. Success to you. Exit. Thanks. 
shut the door and lock it. Will you, Houston? I'll shut it, sir. But I can't lock it. Why not? Because there is no key, sir. Rollo, getting nervous, crosses to left. N no key? I, I never heard of such a thing. How are you supposed to keep the door shut? Lean against it, I suppose, sir. Now that I examine it, there's not even a keyhole. Have it attended to at once. Uh, call somebody. I doubt if there's anyone with a keyhole in the house, sir. A rap at the door. Careful now. Sits chair right. Mrs. Park Gales at the door. Just a moment, please. I must speak to Mr. Webster. Mr. Webster is dressing. Well, can't I just speak to him through a crack in the door? Mr. Webster, it's most important. It's about Miss Macduff. Rollo, anxious, going to door. What is it? Is anything the matter? I should think so. She enters, made up as queen. It's her hair. Mr. Webster, you must speak to her about it. Mrs. Park Gales carries in her hand a flaxen wig with a few lilies tangled in it. Rollo, horrified at sight of it. What's that? This is a very beautiful wig that I wore for years, Mr. Webster. I have offered it to Miss Macduff, but she has refused it, none too graciously either. If you know anything about hair, you can see— I don't. Please take it away. It smells of mothballs. Oh, that comes right out. Don't let it come out here, please. But Miss Macduff has no hair but her own to wear, Mr. Webster. Miss Macduff is wearing the hair I want her to wear, Mrs. Gales. But she looks like a soubrette. Will you at least see it before you let her go on with it? Unless you have seen her with her hair down. Perhaps you have. I have not. Ask her to come in here. I will, and I'll leave this in case you change your mind. Waving the wig. Uh, don't leave it in here, if you value it, Mrs. Gales. Uh, Houston, see that wig out the door. Yes, sir. I'll take it. At least I've done my part. In memory of the Ophelias of better days. Success, Mr. Webster. Exit with wig. Rollo backs up to chair at dressing table. Bumps into it. Damn. I'm glad to see you get so excited, sir. You'll give a much better performance. I'm not excited, but I hate great hanks of hair from God knows whose head, smelling of mothballs. A rap on the door. Houston goes and admits Goldie. She wears her Ophelia costume, her hair in braids. Houston... See if you can find a keyhole. Yes, sir. Exit. I heard what she said, Mr. Webster, from my dressing room. I can't wear my hair any differently, and if you want to get someone else to play the part, you can do so. I will gladly resign. Rollo, looking at her with unaffected admiration. Goldie. How exquisite. How heavenly you look. Goldie, surprised, but finishing what she had come to say. I have said I didn't want to play it, and I don't. Rollo, looking at her hair. Goldie, can it be possible that it is really yours? Of course. Rollo, delicately pointing from tip to top of braids. All the way from here to here. May I take one in my hand? How cool and lovely they are. Are they braids, Goldie? No, it's plated. Do you really like my hair? Good heavens, my dear. I... <laughs> I never felt like this about anyone's hair in all my life before. Takes braid and kisses it. Then kisses her. Goldie submits without a struggle. Forgive me. 
I shouldn't have done that. Will you forgive me? Goldie crosses right. Why, of course, Rollo. It's quite all right. I expected you to. Rollo, down right center. You did? Yes, they all have. Mr. Stein and everybody. Rollo, starting away angrily. Well, that doesn't make it any better. No, not any better. Only I'm used to it. Goldie, how could you let that man kiss you? I didn't. He just did. Just the way I did, I suppose. <sighs> what beasts we are. I hadn't any idea I was going to do it. Or I'd have led up to it in some way. Led up to it? Yes. You must have noticed, Goldie. You must have realized in these past three weeks. Are you leading up to it? Are you going to do it again? No, I'm not. I wouldn't make you afraid of me for all the world. I'm not afraid of you, Rollo. Aren't you? I know that it doesn't mean anything. I'm not the one that you... It wasn't a serious kiss. Wasn't it? But it was. That is, it would have been, but you see... So much depends on tonight. I hardly know yet who I am. I may find that I'm just plain Rollo Webster. And I may find that I'm... Hamlet. Yes. Enter Houston. Hastily takes Hamlet cloak from behind wardrobe curtain. Better be getting out, sir. I should say so. Exit Rollo and Houston. Houston carrying cloak. After Rollo's exit, Goldie goes to the dressing table and looks at herself in the mirror. Goldie, to her reflection, Why, Goldie Macduff, whatever are you doing in Ophelia's clothes? My poor child, I'm sorry for you. I'm truly sorry. Enter Houston excitedly. Don't go, miss. Just for a moment. Something has happened. What is it, Houston? Just after Mr. Wallow went on the stage, a message came for him. It was delivered to me. It's, er, uh, it's about his grandfather. What's the matter? Why, his grandfather is sick and, well, here's the message. Goldie, taking the message from him, reads. Come at once if you ever wish to see your grandfather alive again. What are you going to do, Houston? That's it, miss. I've sent out front for Mr. Stein. If he wants to do anything, he can. Ready to fade out lights, end of scene. But Mr. Rollo must be told, Houston. He must be told immediately. I don't see that, miss. Shakespeare is a solemn occasion. Almost as solemn, we might say, as death. It deserves the same respect. I shall not tell him, at least while he's on stage. But you must, Houston. It may be too late if you wait. Houston, crossing right. I am sorry you feel this way about it, miss. Oh, but I do. Anyone would. Stein enters. Goldie crosses to him, center. Mr. Stein, Mr. Webster's grandfather is ill and has sent for him. You must stop the performance at once. Goldie, you an actress to say such a thing? His grandfather means far more to him than Hamlet. He would want you to tell him. Is the old man very sick? Of course he is. Look. She shows him the message. He can't prevent his grandfather dying, Goldie even if we told him. He'll never forgive you. He'll never forgive himself. Think what it will mean to him, that while he was out there playing a part, a real person, his own grandfather, was calling for him. Haven't you any feeling? Haven't you any heart? Sure I got a heart. But you gotta control your heart, Goldie, in this business. Put yourself in his place. I never was a dying grandfather. 
that if i was one i don't think i would want to break up a show on opening night goldie going center turning to houston and you houston after all you're the one who ought to do it you're the one who has been told to do it oh it's wicked you must tell him you must if you don't i shall starts to exit stein blocking her way you go there have you lost your senses no i haven't don't you know they never deliver a message like this in the theatre if this was a regular theatre we wouldn't know anything about it i'm glad it isn't then let me go nothing no one can stop me because i know i'm doing right exits curtain lights out Act Two, Scene Two. Dark change from the preceding scene to stage of the Oddity Theatre. Act One, Scene Two of Hamlet is in progress. The room of state in the castle is represented by a grey backdrop, a platform with two gold chairs and a fur rug. The lighting is odd, but rather interesting, the gold chair section being reddish, indicating the character of the king and queen, while a pale lemon light shines on the features of Hamlet. Discovered at Rise, King, Queen, Hamlet, Polonius, and Laertes. King, in continuing speech, What wouldst thou beg, Laertes, that shall not be my offer, not thy asking? The head is not more native to the heart, the hand more instrumental to the mouth, than is the throne of Denmark to thy father what wouldst thou have laertes dread my lord your leave and favour to return to france from whence though willingly i came to denmark to show my duty in your coronation yet now i must confess that duty done my thoughts and wishes bend again toward france and bow them to your gracious leave and pardon have you your father's leave what says polonius he hath me lord wrung from me me slow leave by laboursome petition and at last upon his will i sealed me hard consent i do beseech you give him leave to go take thy fair hour laertes time be thine and thy best graces spend it at thy will but now my cousin hamlet and my son Hamlet, aside, A little more than can, and less than kind. How is it that the clouds still hang on you? Not so, my lord. I am too much in the sun. Good Hamlet, cast thy knighted colour off, and let thine eye look like a friend on Denmark. Do not for ever with thy veiled lids seek for thy noble father in the dust thou knowest tis common all that live must die passing through nature to eternity ay madam it is common if it be why seems it so particular with thee rollo who has intended to play in the simple modern manner is by this time infected with the old school work of the others and begins to sing his lines seems madam nay it is i know not seems he rises letting his cloak fall back on seat tis not alone my inky cloak good mother nor customary suits of solemn black nor windy suspiration of forced breath no nor the fruitful river in the eye, nor the dejected haviour of the visage, together with all forms, moods, shapes of grief. Goldie enters. Rollo! That can denote me truly, these indeed seem, for they are actions that a man might play. Rollo! But I have that within which passeth show these but the trappings and the suits of woe king 
taking rollo's cue to ignore goldie tis sweet and commendable in your nature hamlet to give these morning duties to your father oh stop wait it's your grandfather oh that this too too solid flesh would melt king and queen rise sit down king and queen sit thaw and resolve itself into a dew or that the everlasting had not fixed his cannon gainst self-slaughter oh god god you will forgive me when you hear what it's about you must come with me at once rollo still trying to save the play severely to goldie be gone girl art mad before thy time no no oh please you must believe me your grandfather has sent for you get thee to a nunnery and quickly too surely he's more important than all this a grandfather is important even necessary but there is a time and place for everything but he's ill very ill no one else would tell you rollo to goldie is it true think well before you speak for if i leave this scene my future hopes are quite quite blasted yes oh yes it's true then that's the end of it as far as i'm concerned he walks off the stage curtain end of act two act three scene one of rollo's wild oat by claire coomer this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three, Scene One The Morning Room of Grandfather Webster's House at Shelbrook. An old fashioned but delightfully furnished room. Door into hall, left upper. French door leading into garden, right upper. Door into other parts of the house, right. Fireplace, left. In front of this, a wing chair facing footlights. On rise, Horatio up left at bell cord. Time, a few hours later. Discovered, Horatio Webster and Aunt Lane. And you suspect nothing? Here the boy was on his way to the devil, and you couldn't get the first inkling of it. Ringing bell, left. Then comes down, sits in armchair. If I had suspected anything, I wouldn't have told you, Horatio. Seated, chair left of table. Oh, you wouldn't? Why wouldn't you? If you could see your face, you wouldn't ask that question. What's the matter with it? Am I flushed? You certainly are, Horatio. You're angry, and you shouldn't be. You've seen cider poured into a glass of milk. What? Never saw such a thing in my life. What the devil would anyone do that for? That's just what you're doing, Horatio. Your anger sets up just such a fermentation inside of you. All your kindly juices are affected by it. Fermentation and kindly juices be damned. What's he going to do? That's what I want to know. Is he going to produce some idiotic damn foolery with my name on it? No, Horatio. He is not going to play in something he has written. Not at all. Not anything like that. You've kept it all from me. That's what you've done. I have to hear the news from a common servant. Are you pleased that Mr. Rollo is playing in a theater this evening? That's the question that's put to me just after my dinner pleased am i pleased how did bella know anything about it i suppose she's been reading lydia's letters to me and what's lydia doing all this time why doesn't she come home i've told you horatio she's visiting friends you ought to be glad to have her 
I'd like to go to town oftener myself. It was a great sacrifice for me to stay at home tonight. I wanted to go to a concert with Lydia. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Perhaps it might not have been a very good concert. I don't like your manner, Horatio. Enter Bella, right. Did you ring, sir? I did, long ago. My toe is very bad, Bell. I want you to help me into some room where I can be alone. I don't care where. If necessary, I can go to bed. Aunt Lane, rising and going toward door left. Don't move, Horatio. If you want your cards, they're on the library table. I would advise solitaire and a hot toddy. You can do as you like. Exits with dignity. Horatio, his manner changing, eagerly to Bella. Bella, don't you think it's strange we've heard nothing from Mr. Rollo? Are you sure the boy you gave the message to is reliable? Bella crosses to Horatio. Sure he was, Mr. Webster. He was a sweet young fellow. You could tell from his voice. What's that got to do with it? You made him write the message down. You sure he wrote it down? Sure he did, Mr. Webster. I could hear him writing it down, as plain as anything. Nonsense. What was it he said? He said he'd run as fast as ever he could to the theater. And I says, give the message to Mr. Houston. Just like you told me. If you can't see Mr. Rollo. Why doesn't he answer you, then? He must have got it by now, mustn't he? How do I know, Mr. Webster? I should think he would. Maybe Mr. Rollo is sick. I'm afraid not, Bella. I wish I could think so. But I'm afraid not. I hope I won't be punished for what I've done. That's all, Mr. Webster. Ten dollars ain't much for committing a deadly sin. You did it to save Mr. Rollo. It was a very worthy act, and ten dollars was a good price for it. But he thinks only of himself. He won't even come to see his poor old grandfather on his deathbed. That's gratitude. That's the younger generation for you. But you ain't on your deathbed, Mr. Webster. If I were, it would make no difference. Don't idolize your grandchildren, Bella. It's a great mistake. Have nothing to do with them. That's the best way. Send them a dollar occasionally and let it go at that. Don't have them around where you'll see them and get attached to them. No, sir. I'll certainly look out for them. After seeing yours, Mr. Webster, if I have any. Now that'll do. You go and sit near the telephone where you can hear her if he calls. Enter Aunt Lane with a pack of cards. Exit Bella, right. Here are your cards, Horatio. You seem to endure Bella's society very well. Places cards on table. Violent ringing at bell of house door. Mercy! Who in the world wants to get into this house enough to ring like that? Wait, let me hear. Perhaps, Lane, you'd better go out. Re-enter Bella hurriedly. Bella to Horatio, breathlessly. The message was delivered, sir, and he is here. Mr. Rollo is here. He run ahead of me into your bedroom. Mr. Rollo, he... Enter Rollo. He dashes past Bella into the room and throws himself on his knees beside his grandfather. Horatio lies back in the chair, pretending faintness. Exit Bella. Aunt Lane down left of center. Rollo, glancing up at Aunt Lane. Isn't there any hope for him? Hope? Why, Rollo? Yes, now that you've come, my boy. Now that you've come. I thought you were dying, Grandfather. His head down on Horatio's knee. I am, my boy. Dying? Why, your grandfather has no more idea of dying than I have. How do you know what ideas I may have? You sent for me, and the message was so frightful. Horatio! Don't! Don't speak to him like that! No, Lane, don't speak to me like that. 
is it possible horatio that you sent for this poor child out of spite no i did not lane you know nothing of my condition i know that no one could eat such a dinner as you did and be ill you you really ate your dinner grandfather hardly a mouthful rollo your aunt lane is set behind the centerpiece the large fernery and she couldn't possibly have seen what i ate and the doctor why isn't the doctor here we haven't had the doctor rollo rollo rising i begin to see it all you don't my boy i do perhaps aunt lane you had better leave us rollo my poor child come into the library and have a little glass of port and a biscuit before you talk to your grandfather no no then let me bring it to you here just a little glass of port and a biscuit rollo passing her down centre oh you talk to me of port and biscuit do you realize what i've done that i've left my play my theatre full of people my manager my actors left them all with no excuse for it in the world that i can ever offer and myself most of all i've left myself there in the theatre well spoken my boy but that will do my poor child remember rollo that nothing is as dreadful or as important as it seems exit aunt lane right rollo goes up to take off coat places it on settee he is in hamlet clothes the first sensible thing i ever heard your aunt say now my boy the thing for you to do is to be reasonable you told me you wanted to go to work rollo coming down right of horatio i did horatio he sees the hamlet costume rollo what are you doing in those clothes these are my working clothes grandfather what you are wearing the costume of hamlet the great dane of elsinore he rolls the words out my god <sighs> don't disturb yourself about it sir it's past and it won't occur again i should have known yes i should have suspected hamlet grandfather did you did you send that message just to get me here of course not my boy i sent it because i knew i knew it would kill me if you went on with all that foolishness if i had known you were playing hamlet i promise you on my word of honor i would be stone dead as i sit here rollo going closer to him do you realize what you have done grandfather but no i i can't believe it you must be very very ill certainly i am many a man at my age and in my condition would have his family gathered about his bedside reading prayers for those at sea or something of the sort rollo turning and going centre and you can joke about it well my boy you know how it is in times of stress we we rise to the occasion sickness and death and things like that don't trouble us not as much as usual rollo still and tense no one would tell me they thought the play was more important all but the girl who was going to play ophelia she ran out on the stage i was just beginning my long speech horatio with a look of satisfaction stopped you in the beginning did she i never knew how much i cared for you grandfather i left the scene and all the people as if they hadn't been there but now i, I believe you have ruined my life no my dear boy i have not 
you must take my word for it i have not my career as an actor is over i may be wrong about it but i believe it is over no i think you are right about that but do not regret it too much rollo why my boy i i wanted to do it when i was your age all people who have any talent want to do it you think i have talent why i have no doubt of it my boy you would have probably made an excellent bad actor just as i would enter bella the young lady wants to know if she's to wait or go home with the cabman young lady what young lady it's miss macduff grandfather the girl who was to play ophelia what and you brought her with you we ran out of the theatre together i don't know whether she followed me or i dragged her after me horatio to bella tell her to come in here i wish to see her yes sir no grandfather she'll understand you're not seeing her but i wish to see her the cabman says it's thirty-five dollars and he wants to know if he's to wait wait i should say so wait forever exit bella he drove all the way from the city grandfather when i told him it was a matter of life and death he said it would be thirty-five dollars you told him a nice way to make a bargain it's a wonder he hadn't said a hundred and thirty-five that's what i thought come in goldie as goldie hesitates in the doorway rollo crosses to her you sent for me rollo horatio looking at her keenly so it's ophelia as goldie stands waiting down right rollo beside her rollo leave me alone with her no grandfather i prefer to stay i won't listen to what you say but i prefer to remain what you go and pay the cabman have you any money on you uh no sir get it from your aunt lane in the library tell her to take it out of the housekeeping money rollo then going to horatio grandfather not a word to miss macduff that will hurt her feelings or i will leave this house forever leave this room now that's all i ask of you i have met this sort of lady before i know how to treat them your actresses were not like miss macduff sir will you go uh, yes i will goes to goldie he wants to speak to you alone don't mind anything he says i wouldn't leave you but when he gets angry he sometimes has a sort of fit what shall i do for him when he has it oh he won't have it if i go don't be afraid of him if he should begin to jump about a little he can't run very fast he has a bad toe rollo takes goldie to horatio grandfather this is miss macduff goldie this is grandfather to goldie are you all right goldie nods exit rollo right horatio to goldie sit down she does so are you going to marry my grandson oh no no mr webster i have no idea of such a thing oh and are you in the habit of running about the country at night with young men you don't intend to marry no really i never did such a thing before but it was so terrible to be left in the theatre and we were so worried about you and the idea of playing ophelia all by myself was so dreadful why you've played ophelia before haven't you no mr webster never oh what have you played why nothing very much mr webster i've been mostly in musical shows oh you sing no i don't don't you have to sing to be in musical shows 
No, you, you don't. Oh, well, what are the qualifications necessary? Why, different things, Mr. Webster. What in your case? Why, I think it was my ankles, mostly. Oh, and your qualifications for plain Ophelia were the same, I suppose? Yes, Mr. Webster. I mean, I hadn't any. I was the one all along to, to beg your grandson not to play Hamlet not to be an actor at all, to, to take an interest in air brakes. Air brakes? What do you know about air brakes? Nothing, nothing at all, except that they need to be improved. Who says they do? He told me. Rollo? Goldie nods. Well, he'll be a great help to the business. So he told you that. Eyeing her suspiciously, and a great many other things, I suppose. What do you mean, Mr. Webster? Well, enough to make you think he was a pretty desirable young man. Come now, didn't he? He told you that he had a large country place. Yes, Mr. Webster, he told me about this place and the garden, and you... I see. And you thought it would be very easy to annex this young gentleman and his possessions no mr webster i didn't well it might be hard but a good business stroke goldie rising with dignity almost weeping what i thought doesn't matter mr webster and what you may think of me doesn't matter for i shall not see either you or rollo after tonight horatio pleased there that's right i'd like to see you show some spirit now sit right down by me again, and tell me— No, I must go, Mr. Webster. Where are you going? Oh, I don't know. But before I go, I want to tell you that Rollo hasn't the slightest idea of— of what we've been talking about, of— of me. What makes you think he hasn't? Well, while he may like me, Mr. Webster, I am sure there are others that he likes as well, or better. Others— what do you mean by that? Actresses? I really couldn't tell you. I don't mean anything. Then I'll have that young rascal in here and make him tell me. Ring the bell. No, Mr. Webster. You must promise me first that you won't say one word of what we've been talking about. In the first place, it will make Rollo very angry. Dear, dear, how terrifying. Promise me you won't speak of... of her, and I'll ring the bell. Certainly, I promise. Not a word. Just let me get after him. Goldie stops suspiciously. Just about the air brakes, my dear. That's all. Goldie rings the bell left. Goldie on her way to door right. Good boy, Mr. Webster. Don't go any further than the library. Enter Bella. Goldie goes quickly out right. Did you ring, sir? Find Mr. Rollo, and tell him to come here at once. Yes, sir. The housemaid says she'll leave if he's going to wear those clothes around the house. You tell her to go to the devil. Yes, sir. Tell her if she wasn't a driveling idiot, she would know that that is a very beautiful costume, one that many men would die to wear. Yes, sir. I should think they would, unless someone's killed him first. Exits right passing above Rollo as he enters. Enter Rollo, crosses left to Horatio, sits right of Horatio. Goldie told me, Grandfather, that you wished to speak to me. So, in addition to everything else, you've been making a damned ass of yourself over women. Rollo puts his head down on his arm. Horatio is alarmed. Rollo, what are you doing? You're not crying. Rollo, sitting up. No, sir. Horatio, roughly pulling him over to him. Don't you know that you're all I care about in the world? Why do you want to disgrace me, raising Cain all over New York City? I'll admit that I'm an utter failure. And, and I'll go into the business of selling air brakes at once. Do you suppose I want an utter failure selling air brakes? I wouldn't have you in my business. 
perhaps some one will have me somewhere you're a very young fellow but i wouldn't mind your marrying at all if you'd marry someone i wouldn't object to thank you grandfather but i'd mind marrying anyone you wouldn't object to i'm sure no my boy now tell me is there anyone have you anyone in mind no sir come come my boy don't say that i know there is someone if you mean miss macduff she won't have me i just asked her in the hall what the devil did you do that for i saw you had been making her cry besides i felt like it goes to bell left and rings that little coarse girl you asked her to to marry you rollo coming to write of horatio she's a wonderful girl grandfather her grandmother was the greatest actress in england i don't believe it what was her name her name was mary mao mary mao rollo i i i of all the stop grandfather you shall not say one word against her oh shan't i no sir not a word how do you know what i was going to say i can imagine it was nothing good oh you can what right have you to imagine what i was going to say i daren't mention her name in your presence is that it i know how you hate actresses you'll never now know what i was going to say not if you beg me on your knees what was it grandfather silence you have deeply offended me i'm very sorry sir that doesn't alter it a violent ringing of the house bell now who's that at this hour of the night rollo listening it's lydia lydia off where is he let me go to him rushing in rollo you didn't tell me oh my dear darling grandfather she kneels by horatio enveloped in her cloak there's nothing to be excited about lyd he's not sick at all why what do you mean i saw the message houston showed it to me i know it was a joke or something a joke but i don't understand why where's your sense of humor you're not sick grandfather but how dreadful oh dreadful is it you'd rather find your old grandfather on his deathbed than not no no grandfather i only mean i wouldn't have come if i had known she rises her cloak falls back disclosing the page's costume lydia what have you got on did you wear those clothes to the concert doesn't he know i was in the play grandfather this is my prologue costume prologue i should think so to rollo and you permitted this no he didn't i made him let me do it going to rollo oh rollo what shall i do about mr lucas forget him but i can't he's in the cab in the cab have the driver start for new york as quickly as possible enter bella with hot toddy which he sets on table the cabman says he won't go back to new york tonight. it's too late and he don't know the detour is good enough what's that another cab how did you suppose i came grandfather how much is it lyd i don't know oh didn't you make a bargain with him a bargain when grandfather was dying just one more surprise for me now and you can call the doctor for i shall need him as if in answer to his request lucas stands in the doorway wearing his laertes costume here it is i beg your pardon is this the cabman lydia falteringly to lucas there's nothing the matter with grandfather at all grandfather this is mr lucas 
he was in the play too as you see delighted to meet you sir mr webster and more glad than i can say that there is nothing the matter how do you do is the entire company here rollo because if so you can go on with the play i should think lucas to rollo drawing him aside i am in a rather difficult position mr webster i haven't a cent in my clothes to pay the cabman a cent wouldn't do you very much good raising his voice my grandfather wouldn't think of allowing you to pay the cab man to horatio aunt lane grandfather i suppose so exit rollo right lucas crosses left of table so you brought my granddaughter out here how did that happen lydia going to chair right of horatio she sits i asked him to grandfather wasn't it dreadful of me not at all i was glad to be of service in such a serious i, I mean we believed it to be serious occasion how did the rumour start rumour it wasn't a rumour i was very sick indeed oh i'm sorry sir i didn't understand i'm subject to sinking spells and i had one i see your heart no my toe tell me how was rollo getting on i thought he was splendid oh he did very well mr webster especially when he was stopped i mean he had just begun to let himself go then of course it was terrible for us all i only thought of myself and how to get off the stage and when the opportunity came to run out of the theatre i was delighted really not that i wasn't deeply distressed at the same time enter aunt lane lydia crosses quickly to her aunt lane embracing lydia lydia my dear child and mr lucas this is delightful delightful is it i had no idea my dull evening was going to turn out like this why thank you miss lane it certainly is delightful to see you again but it seems terrible to intrude upon you like this and i'm awfully afraid i'll have to ask you to keep me overnight why of course mr lucas we wouldn't dream of letting you go here's a nice hot drink i've just made for mr webster you must have it as he protests yes you must you're so thinly dressed aunt lane presses it upon him he takes the glass reluctantly yes he didn't even have a coat i rarely ever wear a coat but are you sure you won't have this mr webster offering the glass to horatio no he wasn't going to drink it were you horatio evidently not he was quite annoyed with me for making it for him rollo enters right crosses above the others to horatio aunt lane hasn't the money it's fifty dollars grandfather but the cabman is willing to stay all night and take a check in the morning ah oh what is it grandfather it's just his toe come let's go into the library i think it will be pleasanter and your grandfather likes to be alone with his toe good night horatio good night grandfather good night mr webster they go outright and leave him lucas carrying the toddy grandfather i don't suppose you're going to use the car tonight i'll get jonas up and drive to the city if you've no objections oh what utter damn foolishness every damn thing i've had on my mind this damn night is rollo rings the bell well at least my damn foolishness won't disturb you any further grandfather i won't see you again for a long time what do you mean by that enter bella right did you ring mr webster bella ask miss lane for a rap for miss macduff i'm taking her back to the city tonight miss lane has lent the young lady a nightgown and put her to bed in the room of hers uh, can i stay here tonight grandfather how dare you ask me that question you know i never wanted you to go in the first place 
and what do you mean by i won't see you again for a long time it will be much better grandfather i shall never be the same again i'd just be a gloomy spirit moving through these rooms bella make a hot drink for mr rollo and one for me and put them on our night tables rollo my boy you'll feel entirely different when you get those clothes off lay out a bright cheerful suit of pajamas for hamlet bella i mean for mr rollo rollo sitting sadly in chair left of table that's it just plain rollo webster curtain end of act three scene one Act Three, Scene Two, of Rollo's Wild Oat by Claire Coomer. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three, Scene Two, the same the following morning. At rise, discovered Bella and Lydia. Bella has a large box. Lydia is arranging roses in bowl on table center. What is it, Bella? As Bella enters left and crosses to Lydia. It's for Mr. George Lucas, marked special. It's his clothes. You might as well take it right up to him, Bella. Wait a minute. She fastens a rose in the cord. Mercy! He'll be glad enough to get him without roses, I should think. Did he seem to enjoy his breakfast, Bella? Did he say anything about my orange marmalade? No, he just swallowed it down. He's too much of a gentleman to complain about anything, I guess. Complain? Why, except that it's a little burnt, it's the best I ever made. Hurry along, Bella. Enter Rollo, left. Rollo, his clothes have come. Soon he'll be dressed and speaking to Grandfather. Who? George, Mr. Lucas. Oh, Rollo, if you would only tell Grandfather what a splendid man he is. Why should I? I don't know what a splendid man he is. What's he going to speak to Grandfather about? About me. Good heavens, Lyd. He isn't going to speak to Grandfather seriously, is he? Of course he is. Why shouldn't he? Do you think we want you marrying men like that? that you've only known a few minutes <laughs> actors bad actors at that he's not a bad actor actors are unkind to their wives lyd how do you know they are i read it somewhere lucas will be unkind to his wife he's just the type i shouldn't wonder if he killed her why rollo how can you say such things he has the tenderest heart and he loves birds and flowers murderers always do it's a fact birds come and sit on their cell windows and they always have an old flower pot with a blade of grass in it or something but it's after they've committed the murder oh i think you're dreadful rollo you're making fun of a sacred thing my love for george lucas your love <laughs> why lyd you dear little soul you know no more about love than you do i suppose how about goldie macduff why bring her in what is she to do with it well you think you're in love with her don't you be quiet don't go yelling around like that about love it's disgusting is it i don't see why your love is any more sacred than mine you're impossible but i'm fond of you just the same lyd if it hadn't been for me you'd never have met this objectionable fellow it's my fault in a way and it's up to me to do something about it rollo if you do i'll never forgive you never i love you now because you've brought this great happiness into my life go easy dear i've just finished my breakfast if you do anything to separate us i won't have to grandfather will settle it why lucas hasn't got a cent 
how do you know he hasn't he told me he longed for his own place in the hills of surrey how can you long for a thing if you haven't got it it's the easiest thing in the world and he said he loved to ride his horse with the wind blowing in his teeth or something like that so he must have a stable sits in chair left of table rollo goes to her the wind will blow in your teeth on a horse from a livery stable just as well dear no you must give him up yes you must but i'll take you away we'll go on a trip around the world how can we you haven't any money you've spent it all on hamlet we'll take yours and go we couldn't go around the world on mine we could go halfway around and grandfather would send for us by the time we got to singapore or some such place goldie has refused you i suppose we won't speak of her if you don't mind she doesn't know what a darling you are shall i tell her rollo going up center no here's grandfather do you want to speak to him enter horatio left lydia rising going to garden exit no i don't good morning grandfather hey, good morning i'm glad to see you attired in something more appropriate than the costume you were wearing last night and i'm glad to see you looking more like yourself this morning grandfather lydia where's your hair i left it in new york you cut it off i did it for shakespeare cheerfully to rollo the iris is out did you know it yes i read it in the paper i'm going to pick some for ophelia to take back to the city exit lydia seems very happy this morning yes i'm afraid she won't be happy long i feel i ought to tell you grandfather horatio sitting at table right sets up his solitaire mr lucas is going to have a talk with you who is he rollo sitting right of horatio why don't you remember last night grandfather no i'm trying to forget it mr lucas is the gentleman who brought lydia out the man in the tan tights i don't care to remember him but lydia says a beautiful thing has come into her life and she means him and we've got to do something about it have him taken to the train uh, we can't do that grandfather if he wants to talk to you i'm afraid you'll have to listen to him i don't see that if you refuse he might run away with her oh he's that sort is he i don't know anything about him except that it would be terrible to have him around the house forever reminding us of last night ah there it is rollo you can't do things without involving others you went off to the city and where is it going to end lucas stands in the doorway right i hope it is going to end here grandfather good morning mr lucas am i intruding no not at all grandfather you remember mr lucas good morning sir good morning mr webster i hope you're feeling better this morning i'm feeling as well as can be expected under the circumstances i understand you wish to speak with me is that so why yes mr webster since you put it that way i do lydia told me i did and i told grandfather where is your sister mr webster she's in the garden waiting for the iris to come out i believe i'll leave you exits left horatio continues to play solitaire lucas crosses to horatio yes mr webster i did want to see you about something very important during the weeks we have been thrown together i have become greatly interested in your granddaughter this feeling has ripened into something deeper just a moment placing a card with care uh, yes go on yes this feeling has deepened into something riper 
I venture to hope that my sentiment is returned, but before assuring myself of this... His eyes on the cards. Excuse me, Mr. Webster, but you could put that two on the three. Where? There. The two of clubs on the three next to the queen. I know it. I don't want to. You've said nothing to my granddaughter? No, Mr. Webster. Nothing serious. Of course, I saw a good deal of her during rehearsals. And then last night... I should think so. Her trouble drew us together. I tried to comfort her, naturally. But you haven't asked her to marry you? No, Mr. Webster. I give you my word I have not. Don't. That's my advice. She's nothing but a child. I'm perfectly willing to wait, Mr. Webster. Don't. I wouldn't give my consent if you waited until she was a hundred. Oh, you object to me for some reason? I do. Sit down. You're an actor, and I don't want one in my family. How about your grandson? Rollo is not an actor, and he never will be. He has left the stage forever. I would be perfectly willing to leave the stage forever, Mr. Webster. Why would you? Aren't you any good? Oh, I wouldn't say that exactly. But there are other things that interest me far more. My granddaughter? Certainly. But I was thinking of something else. What were you thinking of? I was thinking of steam pumps. You don't say. Do you know anything about steam pumps? There's nothing I don't know about them, Mr. Webster. I made them a special study. My ambition was to be an electrical engineer, but my father wanted me to go on the stage. What a damned fool. Yes, dear old man. Ah, well, I'm very much interested in a steam pump, the Dugdale. Perhaps you've heard of it. No, Mr. Webster. Is it used in England? No, it isn't. But it ought to be. Lucas, I'd like to get you back in honest work. The theater isn't honest. There's something wrong with everyone connected with it. But how would you like to take my pump to England? I wouldn't object at all, Mr. Webster. Horatio, glancing at him, and then looking away. The trouble is, you don't look like it. Don't look like a steam pump? That's it, exactly. You can trust me, Mr. Webster as an actor, to simulate what I fail naturally to express. You mean you can't act like a steam pump? I'm sure I can. Lucas, it's too bad. You're a man of some quality, I can see that. Glancing at him. But I could never stand it. No, if you go to England in my interest, you must never come back. Not at least until I'm dead. I understand, Mr. Webster. But you let me know, won't you? I'll tell them at my New York office, 17 Broom Street, that you're connected with us in a business way. Certainly, Mr. Webster. I understand. You don't object to my saying goodbye to a granddaughter, Mr. Webster. Delighted to have you. But don't make it long, you know. The longer you make it, the harder it will be for me. I will make it very short, Mr. Webster. And you'll take the steam pump over to England? Lucas, rising. It's not romantic, but I will. Horatio, rising. It may not be romantic, but it's solid. It's utilitarian. Lucas, smiling. A steam pump? Oh, come, Mr. Webster. A man to man. I know of nothing so temperamental. Goodbye. Shaking hands. And I hope I won't come back for years. Really, I do. Exits into garden. Uh, damn it, there's something to him. That's the worst of it. Horatio exits left. Enter Bella and Stein, right. Bella at door. Just up in here, please. Stein enters. Will he know who you are? Oh, yes, he knows me. You haven't any books to sell or something of that kind? No, I'm sorry, I didn't bring any books with me. He wouldn't have seen you if he had, that's all. Stein left. It is young Mr. Webster that I wish to see you understand. Oh, Mr. Rollo, just a moment. 
Did the old man die last night? I don't know. He ain't dead this morning. Exit Bella, right. Enter Goldie, right. She is wearing a morning dress of Lydia's. Goldie, surprised to see him. Oh, Mr. Stein, I'm so glad to see you. Goldie, so this is where you came when you went. Goldie, down right, to Stein. Yes, you must take me back to the city with you. When are you going? I came to see Mr. Webster. After I see him, I expect to go. What are you doing here? Oh, I don't know. I ought never to have come. Was you invited? No, I wasn't. I came last night with Mr. Webster. I knew you would be terribly angry with me for breaking up the show. And then I was so worried about Mr. Webster's grandfather. Oh, well, I'm through with you for Shakespeare, Goldie. But put on your hat, and I will maybe get you into something, if it is only a railroad train. Goldie, going toward door, right. Thank you so much, Mr. Stein. Enter Rollo, left. Crosses to Goldie at door, right. Rollo, plainly nervous, but controlling himself. Good morning, Mr. Stein. Good morning, Goldie. I hope you slept well. I didn't sleep at all, and I was so frightened when I woke up. I'm sorry. Mr. Stein is going to take me home, but first I'm to see your grandfather. He sent this note to me this morning. Gives Rollo note. Rollo, reading. Meet me near the large chair in the sitting room at 10.30 promptly. Do you wish me to be here? I don't think your being here would do any good. Are you afraid of him? Not very. Goodbye, Rollo, if I don't see you again. Rollo, taking her hand. Oh, you can say goodbye like that, after all we've been through together. Why, there isn't any other way to say goodbye, Rollo, but just to say it, is there? Sometimes there isn't. He drops her hand. Goldie goes. Well, Mr. Webster, how do you feel this morning? Mr. Stein, if there's anything I can do about last night, just let me know, and I'll do it. I feel worse than you possibly can. I... Have you seen the papers? No, I had them all destroyed. It don't matter. I have the notices. I beg that you will spare me. Really. But you don't understand, Mr. Webster. The notices are all favorable. Taking out paper notices. Sits left of table, center. This is Fume. You know how irritable he is. He is crazy about us. Rollo, right of table, center. Just a moment, Mr. Stein. Did the performance go on after I left? Sure we went on. Reads. All doubts of the commercial value of Shakespeare were dispelled last night at the Oddity Theater, where Hamlet was produced by the Rolster Producing Company, Incorporated. But how could you have gone on after I left? Wait. Reads. Mr. Rolster appeared in the name part. The indisposition of the young man was noticeable from the first. Stop. Did you say was noticeable from the first? From the first. Rollo taking paper. From the first. Waving Stein off as he reads. When the impresario announced that he had withdrawn from the cast, and asked, Is there a Hamlet in the house? The response was almost unanimous, and a favorable comment on the classical education of our English-speaking public. Why, Mr. Stein, this is pure sarcasm. You don't take this seriously. We are taking money at the box office seriously, Mr. Webster. 
you haven't come to what was the surprise of the evening. Read it. I'd like to hear it again. The surprise of the evening was Mr. James Houston, who was found to be in Mr. Rolster's dressing room and was perfectly conversant with the role. From the moment he stepped upon the stage, the house was in an uproar. Looks up in astonishment at Stein. Houston played the role? Stein, rising, goes to Rollo. The biggest laugh and hit in the world. That's what it says. I will say that you're not as funny in the part as I thought you would be. Thanks. What is it you want of me, Mr. Stein? My time is limited. I want you to persuade Houston to stay in the part. He isn't as pleased as I am over the way it went. Oh, he's not? You tell him, Rollo, that people always laugh more or less over these old shows. After all, how could anyone that lived as long ago as Shakespeare know what would be funny now? Where is Houston? He came on the same train as I did, but he took a walk from the station, I guess. He says he was nervous. I'll see him when he comes. As Horatio enters door left. Grandfather, this is Mr. Stein. I have always wanted to meet you, Mr. Webster. Glad to meet you. Uh, sorry. I have a very important engagement this morning. Would you mind stepping outside a moment? Not at all. Come with me and I will finish telling you. Mrs. Pot Gales was Ophelia, and when she got mad, believe me, it meant something. As for the Queen, you will laugh your head off when I tell you who doubled in the Queen. Exit Stein and Rollo. Horatio, looking at his watch, seats himself in the large chair right, expecting Goldie. Enter Aunt Lane. Horatio hears her. Horatio, thinking it is Goldie. Come here, my dear, and sit by me. Aunt Lane crosses to him. I will, Horatio. I want you to make out a check for the eighty-five dollars I've spent out of my housekeeping money for cabs. Eighty-five dollars? I thought it was thirty-five. Aunt Lane, sitting right of Horatio. There were two. The first was thirty-five, and the second was fifty. I'll let into it later, Lane. I don't wish to be disturbed now. I'm afraid I shall have to disturb you about something else, too, Horatio. Coming through the garden a few minutes ago, I saw Lydia and Mr. Lucas on the bench by the iris bed. They were sitting in perfect silence. Well, what of it? If they couldn't think of anything to say to each other, how else could they sit? It was not because they couldn't think of anything else to say, Horatio. It was because they didn't need to say anything. Besides, he was holding her hand. I knew it. Yes. I believe she's madly in love with him rubbish madly in love a child like lydia madly in love young girls love very deeply horatio well at least he's very handsome and we need some handsome men in shellbrook i don't think there's one lane do be quiet it's all been attended to i'm going to send him to england next week enter lydia through french door aunt lane rising coming down center it's cruel. Aunt Lane, I am so happy. I'm so happy, Grandfather. What did you say to him, to Mr. Lucas? He's so happy. Is he? I'm going to send him to England, my dear. I'm doing it for the best. That's all I can say. I'm sure you are. But he'll come back. I know he'll come back. I knew it when he said goodbye to me in the garden. He said it so strangely. Horatio, irritated by her cheerfulness. Strangely, oh, yes, of course. 
everything to a young girl is strange it has to be or it wouldn't be interesting there horatio if it hadn't been for a young girl you wouldn't be in existence what do you mean by that your mother my mother was a sensible woman aunt lane to lydia sympathetically how do you mean darling he said good-bye to you strangely did he kiss you oh no only said darling he said darling good-bye good-bye darling ah be sure you get it right between you as if it made the slightest difference no nothing makes the slightest difference because he loves me i shall sit on the garden bench by the iris bed and think of him every day until he comes back lydia starts off left well i'm glad she's happy but i want the garden bench moved away from the iris bed the garden bench will not be moved horatio enter goldie right goldie surprised to see lydia miss bouton i'm not really i'm his sister his sister goldie he's such a darling he told me not to tell you but he is exit lydia into garden miss bouton was just a joke we didn't want anyone to know lane i have an appointment with this young lady will you go into the garden aunt lane to goldie with dignity i'll be in the library my dear if you should need me exit aunt lane right did i make a cry last night goldie yes mr webster just a little i'm sorry come here she goes to sit in chair left of table center no here she goes to chair right of horatio and sits i sent for you because i wish to ask you a few questions yes mr webster questions my dear relating to your grandmother oh yes mr webster did she er uh, did she ever mention my name what is your name mr webster horatio but she always called me hoary well you see i was so young when i left england but i'm sure she did to my mother anyway did you know grandma when she was playing yes that was when i knew her the beautiful mary moe you have a trace of her but not much my dear not much oh no i'm not like grandma mary was the most exquisite ophelia how i wept over her mad scene you would weep over mine but it would be for a very different reason mr webster i simply can't act i don't like it and i can't can't you now what do you like to do oh i don't know really i never had time to do anything i like i love children and flowers and my sweet grass sewing basket i love to sew and and put initials on things <laughs> do you now poor little mary but your name isn't mary yes mr webster it is they call me goldie but i was named after grandma oh if she had only been more like you oh dear no one ever said that before i would have given her all the flowers and children and sewing baskets and initials in the world but she wouldn't have them oh really mr webster was it that way that's the way it was my dear if i had waited everything might have been different i might have been your granddaughter mr webster with some little changes yes that's true and now history repeats itself you refuse my grandson he told me you did last night and i couldn't get a word out of him about that lady you gave me to suppose he was interested in oh did you speak of her when you promised me you wouldn't certainly i did promises like that are only made to be broken enter rollo up center from garden grandfather houston is here i 
think perhaps we'd better see him together why what has happened to make houston so formidable mr stein has happened goldie crosses right center oh and i'm going back to town with him he's gone if someone would take me to the train rollo crosses to her someone will will you wait for me in the library she hesitates you will wait for me in the library exit goldie rollo crosses to chair right of horatio and sits they want houston to continue in the part of hamlet grandfather horatio who is pleasantly preoccupied starts houston uh, to continue in what it seems he went on and played the part last night he was very amusing so they say amusing we must try to persuade him not to grandfather they will pay him a lot to do it but i think we owe it to shakespeare not to allow our butler to make him a laughing stock why certainly we can have him put in an insane asylum without any trouble i should think houston playing hamlet enter houston from the garden pardon me sir may i come in come in houston we were expecting you what is it you want to do houston to rollo remember you are a witness houston downright i wish to return to service sir what houston to rollo i have left everything in order in the studio sir i do not wish to stay with anyone connected in any way with the theatre really i am crushed sir i have played the greatest part in the world and during the soliloquy they laughed at me they laughed horatio unable to restrain himself good good rollo reproves him with a glance i mean uh, horrible oh horrible the times have changed sir there is no appreciation of greatness the stage has been debased i'm glad to hear you say so houston i am through with it i would like you to give me a reference sir would you like to come back here houston yes sir you won't need houston rollo no sir i'm going on a trip around the world i see consider yourself re-engaged and your wages raised to any reasonable figure houston yes sir thank you sir starts right to door tell miss macduff i want to speak to her houston long distance sir no she's in the library as houston is about to exit crosses to houston houston i feel i ought to thank you for what you did last night i beg that you won't sir i'd rather we never referred to the subject again i feel the same way houston but we shouldn't we should learn something from our experience yes sir i am beginning to think that hamlet is a thing to be played in the privacy of one's bedroom houston we should no more do it before an audience than we should pray before them perhaps you're right sir houston just one question what did you wear my father's old hamlet costume sir i had taken it to the theatre and hung it beside yours oh you thought you might be called upon no sir just for old time's sake no sir if i had expected to wear it i would have had had it darned oh houston good heavens yes sir i shall try and make it up to you in some other way houston what have you done with your costume i have laid it away in mothballs sir lay mine with it he holds out his hand which houston takes silently houston exits right rollo comes back left of table you were so high and mighty with me last night 
you never gave me a chance to tell you rollo my actress was mary's grandmother who is mary mary is ophelia grandfather you don't mean that your actress was my goldie's grandmother no your goldie's grandmother was my actress ah those days in london rollo the happiest days of my life why didn't you stay there grandfather mary wouldn't have me she wouldn't leave the stage for anybody and i came back to america and married your grandmother then mary relented wrote me letters such beautiful letters but grandma was firm i never saw her again it's awfully sad grandfather if you'd stayed in london i might have been a good actor horatio rises and starts toward the french door rollo to center yes if you're going to take a trip around the world my boy i suppose you want to see if you can persuade mary to go with you well i have no objections that's too bad sir because she has don't give up just because she doesn't want you why i asked her grandmother at least a hundred times and i know now that i lost her through my lack of persistence persistence next to brute force rollo is the most important of the virtues in dealing with women as he exits through the door left oh yes we get to know these things too late that's the trouble exits rollo up left enter goldie goldie to below table center did you want to speak to me yes why didn't you tell me your name was mary why mr webster does it make any difference of course it does it's my favorite name you told my grandfather why keep it from me i'm sorry i wouldn't have told him only it came up while we were talking he was in love with your grandmother i know it he's perfectly willing for me to marry you oh is he are you sure did he say so yes but what difference does it make you're not willing i asked you last night and and you refused me if you think i'm going to ask you this morning just because my grandfather is willing you're mistaken still i can't help being glad he wouldn't have minded mr webster why is it mr webster this morning why the excessive formality when only last night it was rollo and i was kissing you in my dressing room oh mr webster don't it seems so awful to speak of such things here rollo crosses to her where did you get that dress lydia lent it to me it belongs to someone who's coming to spend the weekend well then i certainly won't be here do you know who it belongs to yes i've often played tennis with it goldie listen to me if you expect me to go on proposing to you the way my grandfather did it to your grandmother one hundred times that he remembers and probably more that he's forgotten just put it out of your mind goldie sitting left of table center why mr webster stop calling me that i ask you now for the last time making a sum total of two this will be final goldie i mean it stopping in fear if you like i'll wait until you know more of what i'm going to develop into the websters are all precisely alike i'll get my uncle john webster to come for a visit and you can look at him that will be me at middle age and i'll be just like my grandfather when i'm seventy that's 
all there is to it take me or leave me i will not go on with this stopping miserably will you let me say something yes please say it quickly just one word i can't uh two then no Th three then goldie is it the right three no rollo i want you to forgive me oh i thought such dreadful things of you because of the girl i heard singing in your apartment the first day i met you now i know it was your sister lydia she doesn't sing very well but i'm not responsible for that you must forgive me for what i thought she was there you see so were you i know but she was there first and i was so surprised and disappointed because i thought you were so nice i see you thought she was a wild oat <sighs> it doesn't matter don't apologize for that oh rollo i'm so sorry about hamlet good heavens don't be sorry for hamlet be sorry for me goldie her handkerchief to her eyes that's what i mean you care more for him than you do for anybody rollo affected by her tears bends over her i don't i don't why goldie i realize now that all the time i was striding through hamlet i was really only stumbling along my way to you <laughs> he straightens up i'll ask you to marry me again when we both feel more like it will you i'd like not to be crying when i accept you then we'll go on a long journey far away from here we'll borrow your sister's baby so people will think we've been married a long time and won't annoy us wouldn't you like that yes but oh it would be even more wonderful to stay here in this house and walk in that beautiful garden and feel that it was home rollo holding out his hand goldie rises oh well we can do that too it won't take long to walk around the garden and think about home a little they start for french door rollo's arm about goldie rollo i love your grandfather never mind darling i love your grandmother they go out the door into garden curtain end of act three scene two end of rollo's wild oat by claire coomer